There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to another past HC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover this exam question, which comes from the ethylene and addition polymer chapter. What I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, you get about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And then when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. So this is a question. Explain how the structure and properties of polyethylene and polystyrene relate to the way each is used. And that's worth four marks. So when you're ready, press pause, attempt the question, and then press play when you're ready again. And I'll go over the actual answer itself. Welcome back. All right, so for this kind of question, first you need to look at the verb. It says explain. So we need to explain, obviously, and explain how the structure and the properties of these different ones, so of polyethylene, polystyrene, how the properties and structure of these two different polymers relates to the way each is used, how so how they're used. So first, you should know which ones, so polyethylene, there were two different ones. We had high density polyethylene, and we had low density polyethylene. For polystyrene, we had polystyrene, but we could also make polystyrene into styrofoam. Styrofoam. So these are the ones I'll be talking about in this video. And think about this, the actual properties as well and the structure. So the structure, for example, of high density polyethylene was, it had linear, so straight polymers, linear polymers, and tight packing. That was for high density polyethylene. Low density polyethylene was the branched one, so it had branches, and it was non-tight packing. And polystyrene that had your benzene ring it, benzene ring. And styrofoam was when we have air blown into it. So all these things you would have considered beforehand, what you're going to talk about in your exam question, and then just shoot off with your actual question or your answer. So what I wrote first is there are two polymers of ethylene called low-density and high-density polyethylene. So I just stated that there's actually two of them, HDE and LDE. What I did then, I chose to start with high-density polyethylene. So I talked about the structure and properties of high-density polyethylene. So high density polyethylene is a long and straight polymer. I could have also said linear polymer, would have been probably better. The straightness of the polymer allowed it to connect to other polymers through dispersion forces. So this is how you have the tight packing being achieved for these dispersion forces between different polymers. And yeah, this allows for tight packing and gives high density polyethylene a high boiling point and high tensile strength because of the tight packing. All right, so here we've given our first, um, we're talking about high-density polyethylene and said what is the structure and property. Haven't related that, we're now what we're going to do, we're going to relate that to its use. So these properties make it ideal to be used for hard plastics, obviously because it's high tensile strength and high melting point. Such plastic containers, such as plastic containers or hard plastic containers and toys, hard toys and also garbage bins. So now we've related the actual properties and structures to its uses. And that will give us at least, all of this, at least a point, which is four points, four marks, at least a point, if not two. Now the next part is we'll talk about low-density polyethylene. So low-density polyethylene is a highly branched form of polyethylene, whereas obviously high-density was straight, linear. And these branches prevent tight packing, so that's why it's not tightly packed. So to prevent tight packing of a polymer chains. What I then talked about next is what that does to its properties. This structure allows low density polyethylene to be used to make softer and more flexible plastics. Because of that low density, it just means they have lower, lower melting points and a softer plastic. Then I wrote about how, what they're being used in. So low-density polyethylene is used to make sandwich bags and less rigid plastic bags. These are the uses, and that's because it has a softer and more flexible plastic. 
So now we've covered the high density and low density polyethylene, and we would have gotten at least already at least two marks out of four. Much more likely to have gotten three marks for this so far. But we still have to talk about styrene as well, styrofoam and polystyrene. So now we're going to talk about polystyrene. Polystyrene consists of a styrene monomer that has a, that have a benzene ring within the structure. So that you remember that benzene ring was that big ring there, and all of them have that for their polystyrene have these benzene rings in their structure. Then I talked about what these benzene rings do. The benzene ring adds stiffness to the plastics made from polystyrene. So that's one of its properties. It increases its stiffness. So PS, or polystyrene, is commonly used to make hard plastics because of that stiffness. I'll also quickly talk about polystyrene, uh, styrofoam as well. Air can be blown into molten form. Molten means just melted form. So molten form of polystyrene to produce styrofoam. So here I mentioned the last one, which was styrofoam, which was a form of polystyrene. And styrofoam has a lot of air bubbles between its polymers. So these air bubbles is the structure. And this gives us these kind of properties, which gives the polymer added shock resistance, so that's a property, and heat insulation properties, these two other properties. And because of these properties, we can use it for, so styrofoam can therefore be used as packaging material and styrofoam cups that can hold hot liquids because so of heat, heat insulation and, and shock resistance. And so here we at least get another two out of four. And that would have been a four out of four total. Because that's a four mark question, you can probably get away with writing a bit less. You can maybe not mention styrofoam and just mention polystyrene, the, what, the hard plastics, or just mention styrofoam and not the other ones. Because overall, for four minute question, you have about seven minutes to answer. So for this kind of question, you should definitely get four or four. But if you write a bit less, you should still be okay. But just make sure you cover the basics. So make sure you name them. So high density, low density polyethylene. Name the structure. Name what that structure does to your properties. And name what those properties do to their the way they're used as well. And where does this question come from? It comes from this slip stop point. Describe, which means we have to actually be able to describe the uses. So describe the uses of polymers made from the above monomers in terms of the properties. That's exactly what we've done here. And the above monomers were polystyrene, polyvinyl chloride, low-density polyethylene, and high-density polyethylene. And this question asks us about polyethylene in terms of high-density and low-density and polystyrene. Hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.